Hi, welcome to this week's edition of What's New at Charlie's. Still living in Don's basement. Hi, Don. Thanks for having me again. Well, you yeah. know, you know, Charlie. Everybody, uh, you know, runs out their welcome after a while. I guess, man. Just yeah. So you know. Yeah. Well, you, we both got the boot from Charlie, so well, we're yeah. both living here in the basement. With, That's true. Yeah. But That's yeah, true. I think we could survive for a while though if we had the live well, we here. Could. We'd we be could. all right for a while. So we could. Yes, um, I, I, I can't tell you we have very much to eat, but we could survive with alcohol. <laughs> that would be good. We'll be fine. So anyway. And you brought a very special bottle. I did. So like um, one of the hardest bottles for me to get in my, since I've been doing this, has always been an orphan barrel. We've been going a long time to get my first orphan barrel bottle. So I'm always excited when I see one. So um Orphan Barrel is, well, you, you tell me where Orphan Barrel came from. It's, well, I mean, it kind of is what it sounds like, right? They yeah, got, yeah. So, you know, Diageo, which, you know, took over, you know, the Stitzel Weller Distillery yep. and bought into it. Um, the idea behind Orphan Barrel was originally finding some old, uh, I don't want to say forgotten, but stocks of whiskey at yeah. uh, Stitzel Weller that they would, they thought were very unique and yeah. that, you know, they would put out as Orphan Barrels. We've tried several different ones. Yeah. Uh, some have been fantastic. Some have been okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think most of the Stitzel Weller stuff's probably used up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those, probably. Before we were doing this, you know, the barter houses and the rhetorics, and I had some of those were fantastic. Um, and I don't know where they're coming the source, but the idea is they go out and they find these barrels that have been sitting around, maybe lost in a rick house somebody forgot about, and that probably happens a lot. I well, mean, when you've got you mean like of, an orphan barrel? Yeah, when you've got hundreds of thousands of barrels aging in a rick house, I can see how it could happen. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. However, the reason I'm excited about tasting this one is this one was put together by their master blender, uh, Samantha Johnson. And Samantha Johnson, uh, she's been a master blender for Diageo since uh, 2020, I think. Mm -hmm. But her first blend was a 15-year I.W. Harper which won double gold in San Francisco. Which is a phenomenal bourbon, yes. Yeah, one yeah. of my favorites. So, and right. I think there's a bottle here on the shelf. There is a bottle right here. Right there, behind Dawn. And, that wasn't on purpose. And uh, the bottom line is uh, she's an up-and-coming female master taster and master blender. And I, I'm really excited to try it. This, this bottle is unique. It's got some cool labeling. And I found out that the Cardinals, the state bird of Indiana and Kentucky. And? Go ahead. West Virginia. See, I teed it up for you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. But yes, uh huh. But West Virginia history coming through. Yeah. So the bottom line is, um, this is a unique bottle put together by a unique up and coming master blender, yeah. and I can't wait to try. This also feeds into your rye, your new rye fetish that you're in, into yeah. now, Don. Yeah, so, it's yeah. another, and we need to talk about that. It's yeah. a 14 year old rye whiskey at 90 proof. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's got great color. It looks really awesome. Yeah. And uh, they don't give you any hint of where it came from or anything like that that you could find, do you? No. You know, uh, I didn't look very hard. It, it may be Indiana juice is what I'm thinking. Produced in Indiana and Kentucky. Right. So there you go. Yeah. Yep. So it's a blend. It's a blend. Some, some good barrels. So, yeah. well, let's, uh, let's see what, what Samantha's done with this, shall we? You know? Fancy glasses too, dude. Fancy yeah, glasses you're for the, you. You're breaking out the crystal for me. Actually, we got all the other ones dirty. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. So here, th these make a cool sound. Cheers. Cheers. Whoa. Okay. Nice rice spice. Wow. <laughs> there is a lot of fruit note on that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I... I was told to look for orange marmalade, and, yeah. and there's a little bit of citrus in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really kind of interesting. Wow. That's a really nice rye. Yeah. 
Right. It's really different from the last ride we had, last week's ride. Yeah. yeah really buttery. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, Smooth. it's 90 proof. It's down a few proof points. Yeah, right. But still well, substantial, though. Well, 90. Well, not, yeah. You know, you know, rye whiskey is really coming on. I mean, it, it's already here. Yeah. And, and there's already huge bands of devotees of rye whiskey. Yeah. I get it. But I'm now tasting some ryes that I think are really above average. I mean, really worth drinking. Yeah, you notice I don't say I don't like rye whiskeys anymore. I, I just I I quit saying that because it became redundant, and I liked it every time. But I really like this. I think this is a great, yeah, this was, and, and like I said, a great rye, but completely different from the rye we tried last week. Yeah. So do you have, do you have more than one barrel or bottle or just one? Two. Two. Yeah. Folks, so, you're going to want to try this one. Absolutely, man. Yeah. And Samantha, I think you did a great job. Absolutely. I, I would go for two double goals. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Really could good bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. So, Charlie? Well, Don, once again, thanks for letting me crash. Let me hang out in your basement all night. So, yeah. That's right. And Hopefully, sometime we'll get back to Charlie's. I don't know when that might be. We do have a lot going on at Charlie's <laughs> in, in the summertime. Um, and we do these videos lots of times on a Monday when we're closed because we found that I don't know your editing's getting good. We couldn't we couldn't get through the crowd noise before, but well, it was I think maybe you can pull it off. And it was actually the jeers and the boos that were hard. Well, yeah, that, that part too. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, and the tomatoes being thrown from the kitchen. That's right. So. But uh, Charlie, great choice. Excellent, man. And wow. uh, thank you everyone for watching. We appreciate it. Cheers. They do make a cool sound.